We're back. Well, we're back to what exactly? You're watching Recall on Record. At your service, my name is Leo, and this is the brand new format for the show that y'all know, hopefully love, and miss. It's been a crazy past couple of months. Again, jumping in from uh, MPL Philippine Season 12, MPLI, and of course, the M5 World Championships. It's just recently that I actually got the time to write down and rework and get this new show on the road. So I hope you guys are in for the ride. Real quick, this is going to be a show that presents information and opinions based on results, research, and of course my own experiences and opinions. And at the end of every episode, I'd like to hear from you guys. I wanna know if you agree or disagree with what I'm about to share with you. And I'd like to hear from you if you would buy or sell, you know what I'm saying? Put it in the comments and as well, click like on this video, subscribe if you're watching via YouTube and uh, give me a follow over all the other social media sites. Shout outs before we start for Smart Giga Arena, your training ground of greatness. I run a couple of tournaments every week, 1v1 Brawl, so if you wanna be part of that, get to it. How do you join? Well, it's simple. Just register via gigaarena.smart. Use your TNT or Smart Prepaid number and Bob's your uncle. You can also use GA20 to get 100 MB of data for all sites, two Giga Arena tickets, and of course, valid for 24 hours, all for only 20 pesos. That's GA20, your best way to get into Smart Giga Arena. GigaArena.smart to learn more. All right, with that said, let's start with our very first statement. And this only really came about after the whole thing ended, after we got to Rizal Memorial, after we left EVM, after we even crowned AP Bren. And that is, M5 is the most brutal World Championships format since M1. I'm not so sure if you guys felt that it was brutal. I mean, for some groups, you would say yes, because who would have thought that we would be missing out on TOB and Homeboys? Mind you, they were in the same group, uh, that it would be so tight between Group C as well. So one might say it's a group-to-group -group thing. One might think that it's also a matter of the draw, uh, that Naisu, Mara, Dilara, Divan, Kait, that it was partly them. But no, real quick, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. In M1, it was the most brutal. That is legit the most brutal M series format we've ever had. Out of groups, you would have top seed go into the upper bracket for playoffs, and you would get second seed into the lower bracket. Upper bracket, two lives, lower bracket, one. Can you imagine that? You were so close to making it through to first seed for two lives, and then you lost via either what a tiebreaker or you go in 2 1 against your next best or you know the one who beat you in uh, the head to head. That was made for a very fast format. And to be fair, it was the very first world championship, and MLBB was very young at the time. Uh, we didn't know how big the esport would grow, and it was a developing scene. So I think trying to keep it brief and succinct worked to its advantage. So M1 still had a lot of memories, and M1 was going to be close to many people's hearts. So it had rhyme and reason being the way it was. Now come M2, you got two things going into this. Number one, it's the second world championship. Sophomore slump, you gotta beat that. And it's the very first big esports event, not just MLBB event, esports event since the pandemic. This was hosted in early 2021. I'd say January, that's right, January 2021. So you can count as 2020 because that's when we started to prep. That's when we started to fly out uh, to go to Singapore. And given these two major points, they really had to give it a solid format. Plus the fact that the number of teams that could participate, that would participate, was compromised, again, given the flying situation, given the whole pandemic. So that format allowed for two teams making it through to the 
playoffs, but first seed would be in the upper bracket. Second seed would be played out through a play-in. So there was technically two phases to the group stage, but mind you, it was a much smaller pool of teams. So with that said, it didn't feel as brutal and it kind of felt like we were working with what we got and what we had, what was allowed at the time. Now come M3. This is when MLBB said, you know what? It's a free-for-all, you all have fun, do what, what you will. We're all here to grow. And that's when we first really started to see the breaking out of the Western uh, side of MLBB. Again, the rise of BTK and all that. When we first really got to know and fall in love with the, the Brazilians uh, in Keed and Red Canids. And all the other teams that came out, Hell, even Bedell from Turkey was a show. So with that said, M3 had two teams going to the upper bracket, two lives, and then two teams into the lower bracket with one life, all through a best of one in the groups. So no matter how bad you did in groups, you would still be in the playoffs regardless. You would still be making it to stage two, technically, of the tournament. So it felt high stakes for sure, but it didn't feel bad. You, your team could crawl out, definitely. More on that later. M4 was quite the same, except for the fact uh, that there were more teams uh, and things felt a little more established and the teams knew each other more and it was a definitely much more developed scene. Come M5, uh, here in the Philippines, we go back to a similar format as M1. But, check this out, they, they, they made this small adjustment to make for the fact that the board is as even as it could ever be. All teams that make it through out of the playoffs now have two lives. Everybody ends up in the upper bracket, which made for quite a show, which made for quite a climb, if you will, because that's where we all found out and fell in love with the likes of Deus Volt. That's where we found out that it's possible to blow up and get gassed like See You Soon because they were so fast, they were so explosive that a team like Deus Volt could turn it on them, right? Those are some of the major stories that uh, came out of that format for M5. Now with that said, just to do the math, to tally it up real quick, M1, two eliminations, most brutal as it gets, one of the two that make it through to the playoffs have just one life. M2, one elimination, again, smaller groups, less teams competing, didn't feel as bad personally. M3 and M4, nobody went home. There were no eliminations automatically out of group stage. And M5, two eliminations, everyone comes through to the playoffs with two lives. Safe, but I guess what exacerbated the whole situation was that the groups were tight. There were a lot of sweethearts and darlings from all sorts of regions all around the world, which you might be able to say is a good thing that made for what seemed to be a better format than M1 feel just as brutal. I personally feel that way. Now, to take this all into consideration, to, to, to put it into perspective, why does group stage matter? Number one, a lot of stories come out of group stage. A lot of moments uh, that start off new narratives or continue certain narratives, much like in the case of Lil Gun, wherein they were the AKA download team, uh, allows uh, to be built, allows to be continued. So the legend of Lil Gun continues, uh, even from now until wherever they end up, pre-MSC or whatever happens in the next quarter or so. Next is the fact that we've evolved from BO1s into BO3s, actually in M1, they got it right. It was a BO3 and then it became 1, 1, 1, 1 and then 3 again. It really shows for a team's consistency and their capability to both be as strong as they need to be, learn on the fly, and in some cases, limit test. I don't want to use the word play around, but you know, limit test. Show what they've got, show what they have packed and prepared before they even go to comfort. This is seen in teams like Onyx. In Onyx's case, uh, they had a solid group, Group A. Uh, they were obviously on top, clearly. Uh, they were able to, in the group stage and even in the earlier parts of the knockouts, they were able to 
go deep. Uh, I mean, they didn't get to flex the roster as much, but they were able to show off hero picks. They were able to show off strategies that really proved that, hey, we're the best of Indonesia. We're possibly even the best in the world before AP Bren took that series and uh, proved that it's still the PH era. And we can win with this. So there's that. There's even Lil Gun again, who's capable of reverse sweeping. You can't reverse sweep in a best of one. And there's the likes of Burmese ghouls who were just crawling into that playoffs position, who were just, just hoping that somebody messes up in a BO3 in our group. Somebody lets go. And it's the same case for homeboys, Devu, and Geek Fam, and who was in that group? Homeboys, Geek Fam, Devu, the Ohio brothers. See, those guys, they, they, they really milked that best of three, and that alone, that silo, that island that was Group D, made for an awesome story. So that's why groups seems very important to me. Uh, that's why I feel like this matter is significant. Uh, that's why it's important to talk about. Whatever that format is also helps kind of pave the way for whoever might become champion. Because yes, throughout the history of the M-Series, Four out of five were lower bracket crawls, lower bracket climbs. So if you drop, it matters that you're able to crawl back and learn and show that you have the heart of a champion, that you have the spirit that never gives up. And it's the past four. The Filipino lower bracket meta. Uh, just the same, in the first world championships, EVOS Legends actually started in the upper bracket. It was Araki Hoshi that got dropped. Given they did go the distance, but doesn't change the fact that it's the Filipinos who have the lower bracket advantage. It's, 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 it's the matter of heating up. It's getting into that championship form that matters. They, they learned a lot. It's clear uh, in, in what happened with Onik and AP Bren, right? Onik swept AP Bren upper bracket finals. AP Bren came back stronger than ever. There was a little bit of a rubber band, a little bit of a seesaw, a pendulum, but eventually game seven... That's all she wrote. You saw it. You saw it in as early as it happened, the 15 minutes of all that game. As well, something to note, all of the M-Series World Champions are all first seed in their groups. So we're yet to see a true Cinderella story or a true dark horse run. I'm happy with what we've seen in BTK. I'm happy with what we've seen in Devu. And I'm hoping that, again, there's a lot of similarities between those two teams and the way that they were able to upset BTK with Blacklist. Devu would see you soon. That whole five game series is a epic in itself. So with that being said, there's a lot that we can take from these patterns and these results from the past uh, few years of the M series, again, half a decade. What a ride so far, what a run. And just to close it off, there's only really been two country versus country grand finals. Uh, it begs to be mentioned, we've had the Philippines versus Myanmar in M2 and AP Bren versus Onik ID just recently in M5. So with that said, there's more. There's definitely a lot to be talked about here. So stay tuned uh, for the next episode of Recall on a Record. And let me know, again, just to round it out back to the statement and the whole root of this discussion, M5 has been the most brutal world championship format since M1. Do you buy or do you sell? Do you agree? And what are your thoughts on the recently concluded M5 world championships? Let me know, put in the comments below. Shout outs to my editor, Ray Ash. Him and I were a team. None of this would be possible without my mans. He's trying to go for 1K on Facebook. Get to it, like him right here and He'll be doing a giveaway and y'all have a good 2024, all right? Hopefully the next episode after this Recall on Record comes out shortly after. I'll be greeting you now. Happy, happy new year. I'll see y'all soon. Peace. Special shout out to Asus Republic of Gamers for those who they are and to Darkly Studios where heroes come to light. I'm out. <laughs>